So uh, I, my intent had been that if there was somebody who wanted to see a tutorial on how do you create a blog post, I could do that, do that very easily. Yes, actually, Is I was hoping that sort of what you were envisioning, or did you want a more specific blog post? Well, I want to create a post for the GSOC midterm evaluation. So, how to do a blog post would be, I think, good enough. Okay. All right. So, and the blog. Is there, yeah, yeah. Is there is there anything you would suggest? Like, what kind of blog post do, uh, does the Jenkins project expect from the GSOC students? Yeah, and and that that we can certainly we can certainly review and and discuss. I think that's a good topic to discuss, and I think it had come out in the at least my technique would come mm -hmm. out in the in the conversation very easily. I tend to grab somebody's blog post that I like how it looked, copy it, and then replace it with my the content I want. So that I copy the. Sense. Saves a lot of time, I guess. Right. Well, and there are some techniques, some techniques there that I use that that fit me. That others may say, "Oh no, I wouldn't use that technique." But at least if you're aware of the technique, it can help. So, so do we could we could have you create your blog post, and I could tutor you on it, or I can create a blog post because I've actually got one that Rishab Rishab and I need to create for the Git credentials binding. Our student is working intently on the code, and we agreed we would take on the write the blog post. So I could do my blog post, or we could do your blog post. Which which do you prefer? Oh, uh, anything's fine. Actually, I don't have any particular idea right now, so I'll be clueless most of the time. So, yeah, I would prefer if you can do your blog post so that I get to see the process. Great. Uh, okay, then let's let's do that. We'll do. I'll work on, I'm going to start, I'm going to begin a blog post that describes the Git credentials binding plugin or the Git credentials binding addition that was made to the Git plugin. And let's talk okay. through what that means. And I'm going to start sharing my screen so that we've got something more than just my face to see. Okay. All right. So uh, let's see. First challenge is the font large enough how about that is that a little more readable font yes uh, it looks perfect okay good all right so so yes this is my terminal window and um i'm going to bring in latest copy of the jenkins.io repository so the repository is this place right here jenkins ci slash jenkins.io slash Jenkins.io. And if we look at that repository in the in a web browser, we'll see it is maintained as code. So if we look at this one right here, here is the Jenkins.io website as code. And we use pull requests to propose changes to it. So, so we'll be doing that here as well. And let's, okay. let's just go find something that we can use as a, as a sample pull request and we'll make it do our job. Okay. So here's this, don't need that. Okay. All right, so first is I like to update my local copy of the master branch to match with everybody else's copy. And so, yes, we're up to date. Uh, now I'm gonna check out a new branch and this is um, announce get credentials, username, password binding. Okay, so that's the, that's the, the branch name is just for my benefit. And okay. now I want to go look for a, a blog post that sort of fits the style that I would like to use because then I'll, I'll use it as a basis for, for what I want to do. So let's see, there's this one. Yeah, we could use that or this one. Now I tend to like a blog post that has a picture somewhere in it, like this one. 
and and so maybe I'm going to go borrow that one as my base blog post. So libera libra chat. That is a good phrase. Let's go find that. Okay, so we're going to follow this pattern, copy that file from its origin to a new location. The location it goes to is the assumed or proposed publication date. And I would like to publish tomorrow. Okay. That will give us a little bit of time to do a review. All right, so here is, so I copied that file and then there is this file which is the open graph image and we like open, I like open graph images very much because they, sh they appear in social media. Cr credentials, here we'll do it like this. Get credentials binding phase one. Slash. Okay, so an open graph image will give us a picture that is associated with the thing O. And we need to make a directory to hold that. Oh, no, that's yes, yes, we need the destination directory. Now the copy should work. Okay, and that's not the image we will actually use, but that's a good, a good starter image. So now if I do a git status, there are two files that are brand new. This baseline of the blog post and this directory for the image. Okay. So now one of the things that I've found very helpful is Jenkins, the Jenkins project has Jenkins social media covers here. And what these are is Jenkins artwork for social media and open graph images. And I like this because somebody uh, else has th thought about and created pretty pictures that highlight Jenkins. <laughs> and so I'm gonna create, and as it turns out, oh, sorry, did you have a question? No, I was just, <laughs> <laughs> like I just embracing this. This is so useful. It's yeah, like a one image repository over here, and whichever image we want, just copy paste. Exactly. Well, and 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 that for me is oh, this is much better than if I tried to create this myself. It it really really is much better. So, username, password. All right, so now what I do with this, so here's the picture that I'm going to include as my open graph image and probably, let's see, maybe I want, what if it were like this? Get username, password, credentials binding. And maybe what we should do is put in something that indicates batch files and shells. And so now what we need is an image for a Windows batch file. Show me an image. There it is. Oh, even better. Here we go. Okay, let's see if we can. 
save that image as that seems like a reasonable oh except it's jpeg okay i would like a, a well huh. well let's i can work on making that image better later just let's work on the concept because i'll want to find something that looks like that include puts batch and Uh, PowerShell. Uh, Go ahead. Oh, uh, like why did you uh, like why did you reject the image because it was JPEG? Is there something like we should avoid JPEG images or? Uh, no, it's a good question. I just I I I have tended to prefer PNG images, but you're right. There may be no justification for me not using JPEG. JPEG may be just fine. Oh, okay. I thought some it might be something related to the background of the image, like in PNG, easily get uh, you can easily separate the background with the foreground. So. And and that that may have that may be why others who are who are more aware than I am of image standards um, would do that. I I I can't claim that that's my reason. Okay. Mine is. I I wish I could say, oh yes, that's why. And I thought thought about that. No, it's just that. Um, I'm I'm just accustomed to doing something different, and okay. shame on me for just doing doing something different because that works for me. Uh, it's uh, absolutely fine, I guess. Experience. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so, okay. but I think I think we need those pictures there to say, Mr. Jenkins plus Git plus shell batch and PowerShell. All right, but here let's. Yeah. I'm going to grab this in its current state. So what I do is I do a file, download the PNG image. So this will download the, the image to my local computer. And because I'm actually running on a Windows computer, but I do most of my development on Linux, I'm going to have to copy that file yeah. to my Linux computer. So. Ah. Okay, we have to rename it. Just a moment. Okay. All right, so scp something.png to my Linux computer. Oops. Okay, it's been copied there. And now what we need to do is we need to move something to this directory. Oof, that was not what I wanted. Sorry, you'll have to just ignore that mistake. No problem. Yeah, okay. So one of the things that I do other, it is certainly not required, but I tend to do it just to keep things under control is I tend to run an image optimizer so that I can reduce the size of the images in hopes of helping the um, search engine optimization process for the Jenkins.io site. Okay, so the images is there. Now let's start editing. Oh, go ahead. What was your question? Oh, the question was, first of all, it sounds really amazing. <laughs> but my question was, doesn't it uh, degrade the quality of the image when you try to uh, kind of shrink it in size, like uh, what, there, what resolution? Is, yeah, there, there certainly is a trade-off. There's certainly a compromise, mm -hmm. and image optimization programs. Uh, that's why most people probably should not bother doing image optimization. In the, in this case, the particular optimization settings that I'm use 
using have, have not had a significant impact on image quality as far as I could tell. Oh, that's amazing. That doesn't, doesn't mean that it wouldn't for others, but as far as okay. I could tell, I have, not, I have not seen it there. Okay, okay. so what I'm going to do is take that open graph image and put it the reference to it right there and right there. So you remember that the original, um, the original blog post that I used as my base, as my copy, started with an image. Git yes. credentials binding for username, password. So and we probably want this to go to plugins.jenkins.io slash git. And we'll double check that that link works. Uh, oops, it would help if I did it correctly, wouldn't it? This is why we test. Okay, so so you see here I've done the open graph and now I'm doing, I inserted my picture and it's the new picture. And now let's make some other changes. Git uh, username slash password credentials binding. Okay, this is not about chat, about community. It's about, have to see if it's about Git. All right. Shab will add, I, oh, here's another good one. All right, so discourse, this allows, this link section with a discourse link allows us to open up the, 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 the blog post for comments so that the comments will be captured in our discourse in environment. So if you look here, you see this discussion. This is available because of that discourse link. So it's very helpful to include a discourse topic like this, but now I need a discourse topic, which means I've got to go create it. So I go to community.jenkins.io and now let's find, oh, oh, I know. A good place to put it is showing off. Showing off is where we highlight new things. And so I'm going to say new topic, git credential, git username slash password credentials binding has released. Would it make sense to add the GSOC tag to it? Oh, it would. Very good suggestion. Yes. So get, let's give it a GSOC tag. Interesting. And there isn't a GSOC tag there. Yeah. So let's add the optional tag GSOC. And I assume that those tags, okay. And now let's see if we can add another optional tag. Git, create Git. Okay, we'll call it those two. All right, the Jenkins Git, the it's called the Google Summer of Code project. Git credentials binding project with Arshit Chopra has or oh, has released the 
username slash password credentials binding as part of git plugin 4.8.0. All right, so now we should probably put in why get credentials binding. Why use, yeah, using get credentials. Well, actually, this will all be in the blog post. So Maybe this is just, let's see, just the place to put it. So refer to the online documentation for examples that show how to use Git credentials binding. This first, okay, the first release, this release includes uh, no, let's say it this way. A future release will expects to add support for SSH private key credential binding, credentials binding. Special thanks to Harshit Chopra for the implementation and to Justin Haringa Rishab, okay, and I always have to look up how to spell Rishab's name. I'll go look over here. Sorry, I should, I really, it's kind of sad that I can't spell Rishab's name consistently, but B U D H O U L. There we go. Okay. As mentors, refer to the online documentation for examples and usage guidelines. Okay. Got it. So now where is the online documentation? Right there. Okay. Get credentials binding can be used with pipeline jobs using the with credentials step, get credentials binding and also be used with freestyle projects. For pipeline examples and freestyle examples. Okay, now back to where we were. Here is pipeline examples. And we'll make it a hyperlink. And now freestyle, which is right here. All right, so now. Okay. So now I have, have something I can paste into that discourse link. There it is. Okay, good. It's the release of git username password credentials binding. 
thanks to the thanks to the Google, to Google Summer of Code for sponsoring the project. And thanks to the student and mentors. All right, now, we should take a look at this and see if we can see it um, when we run it. So I'm going to okay. switch modes. A little. Go ahead. What was your question? Oh, no question. I said, OK. All right. OK, so this is me doing make run. And what make run does is it will compile the website and put it into a mode where if I make a change to the file, a file, it will reload that, that change the next time I load the page. So now I'm going to look at my at that site and it will be on port 4242 of my computer. So here is the prototype um, and let's bring up the real site for comparison. So here's the prototype. Here's or here's the prototype. Here's the real site and they, they look the same. That's good. When I click blog though, here is get username passwords credentials binding. Whereas on the real site, if I click blog, that isn't there yet. So here we go. And there's my picture. Uh, now it doesn't have all the, it doesn't have any text in it yet, but there's my picture. Could you scroll down to the Discord? Uh, discourse, sorry. The dis uh. Yeah, that's interesting. This one doesn't show the connection and I'm not sure why. I wonder if my local development environment doesn't have the correct, correct credentials or, and, and that's perfectly fine. I think it will be okay. Let's double check that discourse link just to be sure. Okay, so here's my, oops, wrong file. Here's my file. And let's look at this one. So is that actually the correct link? As far as I can tell it is, so I think that's okay. Okay. So we're gonna hope that this discuss section not being immediately visible is not a serious problem. Oh, and now we need to add authors because Rishab is going to help with this. He'll be one of the authors and a reviewer. So now I need to find his author file. So one of the things that is needed in order to submit a, uh, a blog post is an author file. And it looks like this. Content underscore data authors Rishab. This is Rishab's. So it starts with these three dashes, name, GitHub ID. If we were to look at mine, we'd see a little more. I've got an IRC username, which is now two. I've got a LinkedIn account. Um, and those are those are all valid things to do. So now we're going to just grab, oh, no. We'll take this and insert it as, as him, as one of the authors. Okay, authors me. Now, if, if it behaves the way I hope it does, when I go back here and reload this page and we jump to the, oops, it didn't do it. Okay, so sometimes I have to go back to the thing where it's compiling and restart it because some processing doesn't happen. Oops, or maybe there's a, well, let's watch and see.
So make run is is very much a great yes. There we go. So there's Rishab as one of the authors, and there's me as the other author. So this back and forth with being sure that everything's working is a, at least for me a much healthier way to to do the the work on it, so that I know that it looks the way I want and it says what I want. Okay, so now I'm going to put in insert, let's see, let's get heading. So what, how about topic ideas would be why get credentials binding. Why use get credentials binding? And it's all title case, so it's supposed to. And then another topic would probably be examples. And another would probably be limitations. And what else? Let's see. So probably that set is enough. And then the, oh, what's next? What's next is a good topic. Okay. Okay, because it is great, insert examples here, does not work with unsupported command line git versions, like the version included with CentOS 6. and unsupported operating system. Okay. Uh, does not support private key credentials. Does not walk the dog, etc. Okay, good. Private key credentials support coming soon. All right, now let's see if my my roughed in changes are visible. Okay, there it is. And this image may be just too too large and I may put it someplace else, but that'll be something I can rework. So Aditya, did that did that help you? I think we've gone far beyond the time that you had probably allocated for this exercise. Are you okay with that so far? Yes, yes, I'm okay. And this has really helped me to understand the process. Great. All right. So I will I propose we call this as an end to office hours because the rest of this editing is not something that I think will particularly interest you or others who watch. But just knowing that yes, I can use ASCII doc markup. I can use lists, definition lists, I can get to use headings, I can even insert tables when I need to, um, all that can help make my blog post a little more readable, interesting and usable. Yes. All right. Anything else that we need to cover today? Um, I just had one question. The development server, the what development server is it? Is it Jekyll or is it something else? Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. What development? And then I missed the rest of the sentence. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Just a second. Yeah, so I was asking what development server is it using to host the website locally? Oh, it's just using my own computer. Yes, but uh, there might be some kind of a server instance, right? A thread running, which is catching the change. I see. Which, yeah, so it's 
it's a Ruby application, if I remember. Oh. I, I don't remember the details of which, what component is inside of it that's providing that. Uh, if we take a look at it here, I think that it's, oh, come on, you silly thing. I think it's it will Ruby tell then. us. My it's prediction using, is it's gel, gel kyle. Could be what, what it's what I see it running is it runs a thing called script slash ostruct. And okay. if I look in scripts slash ostruct, that I think just calls a Ruby bundle exec ostruct. Okay. Got it. And and ostruct is the site generator that we use, site. and it lets us interpret uh, ASCII doc and have it converted into HTML. Got it. Thank you. Uh-huh. Any other answer. questions? None for now. I think I got what I needed so I can start. All right. Thank you, Aditya, and good luck. Thanks very much. Thank you for the demo. Oh, tutorial. <laughs> you bet. Absolutely. Recording should be, I should be able to post the recording within the next two or three hours. Talk okay. to you again. Uh, before we go, uh, and oh, probably... Yes. Of the record, what was uh, when will be the recording for the uh, uh, 